What's up guys, this is Brad at Hourglass Fab, and today we're going to be talking about my most used hand tools of 2018. I have found new little tools here and there that I've never heard of and I didn't know about that make your life a thousand times easier, and I just want to share a couple of them. Some of them are your everyday tools that you probably already have, and some of them are things that I didn't know about that maybe you don't know about. Sorry I haven't posted in a couple of weeks. I got pretty busy there, honestly a little burnt out, burnt out from just social media, and I just kind of wanted to take a little bit of a step back to catch my breath. Now when you're doing so many different things, it's really hard to keep up on everything. I appreciate everybody's patience, so thank you for that. Uh, we went on vacation to Hawaii and that was a really cool experience. I just want to say real quick that traveling is extremely important. Spending time with your family is important. Doing things and stepping out of your comfort zone is important. Don't let your work consume you. Don't let your work consume you guys, seriously. I guarantee most of us are guilty of it. We let what we're doing take priority over our families, over our friends, over our life and you need to just work when you have to work and still live life because life is short. Anyways guys, I got some cool footage over in Hawaii, a lot of cool photos. I might throw a little bit of B-roll in here from Hawaii so you can check that out. get to the tools that I've used most in 2018. All right, so the first two tools that I got that really helped me out were calipers. Now, I have a six inch Mitatoyo digital solar powered caliper in my right hand, which would be backwards for you. <laughs> and I have a six inch Fowler dial caliper in my left hand. And these are both used for two totally different things. Now this one's used for measuring the OD, the outside diameters of things, the distance between holes, just in general, fairly accurate measuring device. And I like this caliper a lot. It's extremely smooth. It's high quality. It's very, very, very nice. Now this in my left hand is a lower quality Fowler six inch dial caliper. It's not nearly as smooth, but it's not bad. This is used for scribing lines. This is used for layout work. This is used for things that might abuse the jaws. And I'm not too worried about it on a less expensive caliper. So this next tool is a square. This is a six inch square. This is a six inch empire square from Home Depot. And this is the square that I started out with. This is a six inch square made by Sterrett. And it is superior to the empire square. Obviously it's a lot more expensive. But not only does it work better, the action is so much smoother. The quality is just on point. And this thing does its job a lot better than a cheap square. This is a 12 inch square by Sterrett as well. And these are two investments that I made. These squares run about $100 plus a piece. And it's not super cheap. Like I said, I started with that Empire 6 inch and 12 inch square when I first started welding and fabrication. And I used those for a solid year before I upgraded. There's nothing wrong with the cheaper square. It's just the quality is significantly better in a more expensive square. Now, obviously you can use a square for a number of things. Making sure things are square. Describing lines, layout work. There's a thousand different ways to utilize a square just like any tool. And having a high quality tool that you can take care of and you don't abuse something that you can look at and it has that value and it just feels nice and it, you feel accomplished for being able to finally buy something, 
like that. It's a huge, it's a huge thing to me. Quality is big. Now these are one, two, three blocks. Basically, it's just hardened steel, high precision. You have a one inch, two inch, three inch. And these are just, again, a thousand different reasons, a thousand different ways to utilize a one, two, three block. Whether you're setting up parts in the manual mill or you need to fix your parts or you're simply just doing some layout work and nine times out of ten most things are going to be a round number it's going to be a whole number on any blueprints or layout work if you're working with something and you need to space it up exactly one inch or exactly two inches having one two three blocks laying around is a huge plus because you don't have to try and sit there and say okay maybe this is about an inch you have something that's within a couple thou of being dead on and you can utilize these in a thousand different ways this is a huge help for me and I've used these so much now the next tool that I want to bring up is a deburring knife now if you follow me on Instagram or you have ordered anything from me you know that I produce the hourglass hand rest and that's basically a TIG welding hand rest that's fully adjustable just to get you in the right position to make a, a sound weld make it easier on your wrists and hands etc now when I was making those I was drilling a lot of holes through tubing and I didn't know how to get to the back side of it to deburr without using a really aggressive file and running it through there until somebody brought up a deburring knife now with this tool you basically put it in a hole and this rotates 360 degrees and it has a blade and you rotate it and it pulls that burr out of the inside and it's extremely helpful there's a ton of different tips you can use for a thousand different applications every single thing that you can think about getting into to deburr there's something out there for it Another extremely awesome tool. Now what goes hand in hand with a deburring knife is another tool that I use. It has a handle, then it just has a five flute little deburring head on it. And this is basically for holes. And it works extremely good in aluminum. It does work in steel just fine. But you drill a hole, the backside's gonna have a burr on it. You pop this guy in there, spin it, maybe once, maybe twice, boom, deburr free, usually nice and even. The chamfer around it looks very good. Another very good tool to have. Now a center punch is used for either center punching a transfer punched hole or just scribing lines and then lining this up and center punching it. But you get what you pay for in a center punch as well. I bought, I probably went through five Home Depot center punches because they just blow up. The inside is not high quality and all the components aren't that great. They got me by, they're only like $7 from there. And then I bought a $65 center punch from a well-known company and it did the same thing. So this is an Amazon special. I've had it for, I don't know, three, four months now and I use it all the time. It's held up. So I guess just try and find one of the good reviews. Now if you have a job that requires a lot of holes that need to be tapped and you're using standard taps, you should try and invest or just buy one and see if you like it. These are called spiral flute taps. Now with the spiral flute tap, along the shank, you have a flute channel that follows that shank up. Same exact concept as a drill bit. When you drill into material with the drill bit, all of the chip is evacuated through the flute channel. Now with these spiral flute taps, as you're tapping that hole, your chip is being evacuated through that channel and being pushed out of the hole. So as long as you apply a little bit of lubrication and you're paying attention to your, your chip being evacuated out of the hole, you're a lot less likely to break taps, honestly. So investing in these was a huge game changer for me. Spiral flute taps, check those out. Now my buddy Dave Blackburn, Blackburn Fabrication on Instagram. He's a machinist by day, welder by night, extremely talented guy. 
And I've learned a whole lot from him, and I can't thank you enough, Dave. Thank you very much. So Dave's philosophy on drilling holes is drill bore ream. So you would drill a hole, whether that be a pilot or whatever, and then you would bore that hole out with a bigger drill bit. And then you would ream that hole out. So the next tool that we're going to talk about are reamers. Now when it comes to welding and fabrication, we are drilling a lot of holes. And most of the time those holes don't need to be perfect, but sometimes they do. That leads me to our next tool. High speed steel chucking reamers. Now these are a fantastic way to make a perfectly circular hole. Whether that be for interference fits, whether that be for just anything in general where you want a nice round clean looking hole. Now you're going to drill bore ream. You're going to drill a pilot hole, you're going to bore that hole out with a bigger drill bit, and then you're going to ream. But the one thing you want to take into consideration is, when you are drilling that hole out and before you ream, you want to make sure that your drill bit is one size smaller than the reamer. So it's only going to have about uh, 15, 16 thou to take out of that hole. And any more than that, it's not very good for the reamer. So one drill bit size under is going to be about 16 thou. And then you put your reamer in and you ream that 16 thou out. And that's going to make your hole concentric because you are chucking the reamer up at the very top of the shank. And that's going to give it a little bit of play. So when it goes down in that hole, those five flutes are going to pull out that 16 thou and it's going to leave a nice even finish with a nice symmetrically round hole. Now, obviously another important tool, calculator. I don't know how many times that I didn't have a calculator in the shop and I just pull out my phone and go to my calculator, pull out my phone, go to my calculator, dirt and grease all over my hands, just pull my phone out and mess it all up. And you know, after breaking screens and just ruining phones, you kind of just want to start taking care of your phone. So I decided, hey, I just need to go down to Walmart and buy myself a $20 calculator. Best thing I've done, honestly. Get yourself a calculator if you don't have one, whether you're calculating blueprints or calculating different dimensions off of a print or simply just trying to figure out the math in machining or whatever. Having a calculator that you can just have right there on your bench and you can use without pulling out your phone is a must. Now since we're talking about drilling holes, one thing that I never really knew how to do, okay? So I would drill a hole just about the size of my transfer punch and then I would try and transfer punch the center of that hole out. And half of the time it was wrong, half the time the thing moved, and it was just an extreme pain. So if I drilled a hole and let's say it was a half inch hole, then I'd get a half inch drill bit and I'd grab it by the shank and I'd stick it down in the hole and make sure my part was clamped. And then I'd turn it to try and get that center of that drill bit to mark center of that hole so then I could punch that out or drill that out. And that's just what I did. I didn't know about these beautiful things called transfer punches. Now, what a transfer punch is, is it's not a punch. You don't punch a little mark in that material so you can then drill it. You just barely lightly tap a transfer punch and then you punch that transfer punch mark and then you drill it. There's a lot of people out there that think transfer punches are garbage because the tips just fold off of them or roll back. And that's because they're not using them as transfer punches, they're using them as punches. Like I said, transfer punch, light tap, it makes a little mark. Then you can either center punch that mark and then punch it, or you can just punch it and then drill it. And that's going to keep your drill from wandering or walking around. Now these transfer punches are going to come in standard, metric, numbered, letters. There's going to be a whole type of different transfer punches that you can use, and you're going to be able to fit one of these in whatever hole you need to fit it in and then you just lightly tap it and it marks the center of the hole. These are probably my best investment. I didn't know about those and if I didn't know about those maybe some of you don't know about those. Maybe some of you didn't realize that you might have needed something that I mentioned in this little list of tools. These are probably my most used tools. I pull all these tools out of the top drawer of my toolbox. They're all laid in foam because I use them so much and I put them back and take them out. So just 
think about what you might need. And if you have a little bit of extra change in your pocket, invest in quality tools. They're going to last you a hundred times longer than any of these Chinese knockoffs. And trust me, I'm with you. Sometimes you just have to buy what you can. Buy the best you can afford. And I'm a, I agree 100%. I still have plenty of Chinese tools in my workshop. I still have plenty of cheaper things in my workshop. Thankfully, I've el eliminated most of the Harbor Freight stuff. I think the only thing I have from Harbor Freight right now is uh, maybe a little 1x30 belt sander. And I've replaced all of that with higher end equipment just because I could. But you need something to start out with and get it how you can get it. Go on Craigslist, buy that there, go to a yard sale, look for it there. I don't really care. You can find very good deals everywhere and you just need to get your foot in the door. You just need to find the tools and use them. And eventually you'll make money from that tool and you can buy the next tool. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and like. If you want to stick around for more random videos like this, feel free. Hit the subscribe button. I appreciate everybody watching. Sorry I haven't posted in a couple of weeks. I'm going to try and keep these as, as consistent as I possibly can. And I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. You guys have a good day. We'll talk to you later.